So hey everybody, welcome to video number two. This is a small series and overview on five different types of equalizers. And in the first video, I discussed the program EQ and showing how, yes, it can be used for a single track, it can be used for your main mix out, it can even be used for mastering. But traditionally, the program EQ is a mono device. They have been updated to where they're either used two very well-matched units for stereo dual mono or some units are being designed as stereo units that have a similar look and feel to the Pultec. All of these tend to go back, the Pultec being the most famous of the first program EQs. And now we want to differentiate the second type of the five that I've chosen to look at is the Mix EQ. And one of the things that I would say about that is that it'll be obvious that there's overlap. You know, a Mix EQ can be a program EQ and vice versa. The thing that would determine whether something makes for a good Mix EQ the way that I look at it is that it is useful for using on an entire song. Once you are bringing a mix together, your bus groups and everything, at the main mix out stage, this would be the kind of EQ that you find useful for bringing everything together in a mix. Since we're talking about mixing in today's world, that would also make the assumption that it is a stereo EQ. And not necessarily that you're handling the left side and the right side independently of each other, because often that's not a great idea to do at the final output stage. And it, it might even be a better idea to work with and mastering with that. But stereo in that it is dealing with both signals so that you're able to listen to your stereo mix while having the mix EQ in place. Now, if you do have independent use, um, it also allows you to do things like mid-side, where you can use one for the center channel and one for the exterior. So the next thing that I would say about Mix EQ is they tend to be used for their accuracy. It's less about heavy color changing the signal for pleasant musical reasons, um, although there are great Mix EQs that obviously have a personality of their own. But the main thing that you want is that you want to have control over the signal, so you don't want to be interfering with the quality of the mix. Um, this means that it has high headroom and that it handles dynamic material well and that it is able to provide a fairly flat signal. Now, in the digital realm, this is pretty easy to do. In fact, it's easier to do that than it is to create an algorithm that sounds more like an analog EQ. Uh, but not all digital EQs are made equally. There are those that appear to be exactly the right slope and the right shape and have a wide range of options to work with. But if you use them too much or at the wrong extreme ends of the spectrum, uh, they can start to create a ringing effect. Um, they can cause anti-aliasing distortion, intermodulation distortion, things that are not very pleasant. The same situation in your analog EQs um, you want them to have very little hiss. You want them to have a very low noise floor. You want them to have high headroom so you're not going to distort the signal by using EQ on it. So another thing that we might expect to talk about with an EQ that is good for mixing uh, is what types of filtering it is able to do. So we might expect to see a low shelf and a high shelf EQ, which are able to handle everything below and above the points that are marked for those signals. Meaning that if you had a low shelf EQ that was notched at 50 hertz, everything below 50 hertz is what you're going to be boosting or cutting with a slight slope that gets you to that point. So they're usually like a very smooth shape, but they're designed to handle everything beyond that point. Uh, in the same manner, a shelf EQ at 16 kilohertz would be handling 16K and everything above that. Fairly endless. So we'd also be looking at the Q width and the Q is a designation where it starts at a center point, and the question is how wide outside of that center point it's going to be focusing on the signal. Uh, if you have a modern digital EQ of some sort, a lot of them will show you the waveform inside of the device. And you'll notice that as you go for a wider Q, usually a bell-shaped curve will get wider and wider, meaning that it may have been going at a base from 5 kilohertz to 8 kilohertz with the center frequency somewhere in between. And as you go for a higher Q, uh, that 5 kilohertz might go all the way down to 1 kilohertz or lower. And the 7 kilohertz might go up to 7, 8, 10, 12. Um, 
So adjusting Q is great for flexibility, meaning that you can hone in uh, just on the hi-hat or just on the sibilance of a voice and tame something down a little bit, or you can go above that and you can give more enhancement into the extreme highs. So you also want to be able to control the actual shape of the waveform. Uh, let's say you don't just have shelf EQ, you might want to have your bell or band-based EQ that allows you to hone in just on a certain center frequency with the Q width adjustable or not. And even in your extreme highs or lows, uh, you're defining a certain point where the signal returns to a zero value beyond the slope. So clarity and flexibility, stereo and being good for the overall mix are all things that I consider great for a mixing EQ. Once again, if it's great for mixing the whole thing, it's probably good for everything else too. You might find that your favorite one size fits all EQ works for mixing, mastering, bus EQ, and tracks. But sometimes it is the specific color or specific limitations, like mono for instance, uh, that make us prefer using certain EQs just for certain tasks. Um, somebody that looks at a favorite mix EQ, often what it means is that a studio does not specialize in mastering. So they've got a lot of consoles or a lot of channels on their consoles or a lot of channels channels built into their digital audio workstation. Uh, they have speakers that are made for hearing the full impact of the song, uh, also making it to where it's really easy for the artist or the producer in the room to hear that full balance, where the mastering engineer, if there's any differentiation, the speakers are designed to be perfect for their spot in the listening spectrum. They may not be perfect off access. They are designed to be in a perfect triangle to the engineer uh, and nothing else. Often the difference in the mix room versus the mastering room. The reason that I mentioned this difference is because your studio might be using exactly the same EQ that the mastering guys are using. Um, your final mix might end up being the final master. But the purpose of the multi-track studio versus the mastering studio might be in the use and design. What is the purpose of why they're using those things? And I'd also mention that a lot of engineers look at some of the highest quality EQs as part of their color box. Uh, it, as a tool that they use for shaping and making things sound like their own. So we even see vintage console EQs or even EQ channels um, being used for mastering. And these are things that you can visualize and say, you know, they are, they are absolutely coloring the signal. They're bending the slope in the high ends. They're doing lots of different things that come from using inductor-based EQs but they are becoming part of the signature sound of the producer or the mastering engineer. And great sounding EQs are very useful for that as well. So I hope that this has been interesting and I look forward to having you join me for video three. Uh, please subscribe to the channel and please, if you haven't done so, go to fixatune.com, go to forum and register. Please come and be a part of our community. It's free and it's all about helping and teaching and learning. So I'm really relying on People, if you get something from this, please share on Facebook. Please let other people know uh, that you found this and that you found it usable. So I truly appreciate it. I look forward to telling you next time I'm going to cover the Mastering EQ as number three out of five videos on five types of EQs. Thanks so much and God bless you.